Hey everybody, this is Charlie, the Pennsylvania grain farmer, coming to you from my uh, red shed here in western Pennsylvania. It is uh, Monday, January the 30th, and uh, the, the, I'm out here uh, in the red shed uh, doing some greasing of some equipment, you know, getting ready for spring. And I'm standing here among my Olivers, and uh, th this should be a short video, but the reason that I'm doing it is because uh, something you know, happened today that uh, kind of put me into a um, reflective mood about our uh, former Oliver dealership uh, in our area, which closed oh, right around 40 years ago. Um, uh, I usually get the mail here around noontime or so, and I was uh, taking a quick look at the paper, and uh, uh, as I was leafing through, I don't usually look at the obituaries, but I noticed that uh, there was an obituary in there for uh, my fourth grade teacher. Well, I called my mother to, to tell her about it because I thought she might be interested in reading it, and uh, she said, yeah, she said, and did you see the other obituary? Now, I won't mention the name, but uh, it turns out that uh, somebody from our former uh, Oliver dealership uh, has uh, uh, passed away, too, and his obituary was in there, which I really didn't uh, happen to notice. But, you know, it really made me uh, do a little thinking back. We had a an Oliver dealership about six miles away from the farm here. And uh, it had been in operation all of my life uh, up until uh, uh, the early 80s. In the, you know, when was it, 1976, I think, the last actual Oliver rolled off the production line. Um, when that happened, uh, this particular dealership, I don't think... Uh, got into selling the whites. I don't remember of ever seeing any there. And it might be that, you know, they weren't a high enough volume dealer at that point that, uh, you know, that that uh, white kept them around. Because I think there was a time whenever, you know, white uh, did get rid of some, some of the dealers that uh, couldn't sell a certain quota of, uh, you know, tractors and or equipment. So, uh, they stuck around through the end of the 70s and into the early 80s, really selling other lines of equipment, you know, like uh, New Idea, New Holland. They sold Massey Ferguson um, and like that. And then plus they were servicing the uh, Oliver tractors that they already sold and, you know, selling parts and stuff for them. But then the uh, the old man, the owner, uh, passed away in the you know mid '80s, and uh, after that, uh, you know, I think things just kind of deteriorated somewhat. And by the you know the mid mid '80s, the whole thing was closed down. the The building is still there, but um, right now it serves as a as a bus barn. One of the local bus companies uh, purchased the property. And that's where they store and uh, service their buses and, and have their headquarters. So the place is still there. And I might even have pointed it out in one of the videos where I was hauling something through town uh, in the F-600. I think one of the trips when I was getting lime, I pointed out the uh, former Oliver dealership uh, whenever I was driving past it. But, uh, yeah, it was a, a lot of memories there. It was a... A father and I guess I'll say father and son's operation. Uh, the father and every one of them had their part. Uh, the father was the one that took care of all the sales. And then there were three sons that worked there. One did the parts. One did, uh, you know, took care of uh, running the service. And then the other one uh, did all the deliveries and, and pickups and stuff like that. So uh, they had the work all, all divvied up. And uh, by this time now, you know, the, the father had died, uh, the two older brothers had died, and the youngest brother, the one that did the parts, is the one whose uh, obituary I saw today. So uh, one of the reasons I'm showing the Oliver 77 is because this is one tractor that my dad bought there new um, before I was born. And then uh, you may recall 
my Massey Ferguson 124 baler here, which uh, you saw in action in a video or two last summer, that was bought new there too in uh, actually 1976, okay? About the time that the, you know, the new Olivers were disappearing from the scene. I know that uh, Massey Ferguson was one of the brands that uh, uh, that they were still dealing with. And I remember other things too. I can recall um, back in the the mid '60s. I was probably about eight, nine years old. Uh, my dad and I, and it was a big deal at the time. We went to this uh, evening meeting, and I think they had refreshments and snacks at that dealership because uh, one of the lines of equipment that they uh, did there, sold there, was a new idea. And that's when New Idea was coming out uh, with the Uni system, um, you know, which is, I'm sure, a blast from the past for some of you. And I can remember going to that meeting, and of course, they didn't have uh, video back then, but they did have uh, a movie and uh, that they showed. Um, I don't remember how many millimeters it was, but uh, I remember them showing it, and they were referring to this Uni system then as the uh, the sheller picker combine chopper, all was one big long word, and I remember you know seeing that it basically had a you know that's how what they were touting was that there's just one power unit, and then you can get all these different attachments to pick corn, shell corn, um, you know chop silage. It could do all different kinds of things, and you know my dad and I made lots of trips there. Uh, you know, sometimes to look at tractors or equipment, sometimes, you know, probably mostly for parts runs. But when we did, something that we always enjoyed was um, going through the used equipment lot that they had be behind the dealership, you know, where there'd be used tractors and equipments. And there were a couple different levels as you went up the hill. So, uh, you know, we would take a walk back there. And we always enjoyed that anytime we went to any equipment dealer. Um, but yeah, that was our closest one. Like I said, it was about six miles away. And, um, after that closed, the next closest one, uh, was in, uh, well, the, at that time, you know, dealt in Oliver and then eventually White and Agco was, uh, about 17 miles away and I know more like 20. And, uh, that has since closed too. I know that it was still open in the year 2000. And it probably closed uh, a little before 2010. Um, and I used to, you know, get my Agco parts, all over parts and stuff there and uh, go, you know, walk through their used equipment yard and stuff. But these dealers are just getting, um, you know, fewer and uh, farther between, you know, and you have to go further now to, you know, to get parts and and stuff like that, but at least there are still dealerships around. So uh, I don't know if you'll find this um, video interesting. I hope you did. It just, uh, you know, seeing the, the passing of the youngest brother who was the parts man um, really kind of uh, put me in a reflective mood. And I did just see him recently at a local sheath store. He seemed to be, looked like he was in good health and everything, Um and he used to see me, and the first thing he'd notice would be my Oliver hat that I always wear. And uh, and then he, you know, he remembered me, and we'd always talk. And so uh, his passing was um, really a surprise. So I just wanted to, I, I put me in a reflective mood, and I just wanted to uh, to share this with you uh, in this video to kind of pay, I guess, a little bit of tribute to that. Uh, uh, to that dealership. And I'm not going to mention the name of it only because um, uh, the name of it contains the name of our local town. And I'm trying not to, you know, to give up my exact location to uh, help keep my privacy. So that's pretty much it. I, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, please hit the like button. Uh, subscribe if you already haven't. And if you have subscribed, I appreciate that very much. Uh, don't forget to leave me a comment, ask me a question. I do read and respond to uh, all the comments and questions that I get. So uh, 
hopefully next time we'll have a little cheerier topic. I am uh, working on some maintenance here that uh, I'll go over. And so uh, for now, this is Charlie, the Pennsylvania grain farmer, saying see you next time.